think longest run ever. Start throwing sissy fist, make it super delicious. The kiwi's a little tight. <laughs> Saturday. That means it's long run day. Preceded by a short bike. Legs are smashed from yesterday. I think that the long run is gonna be a little tough because we got a fair bit of snow two nights ago so it's gonna be really sugary all around the running surface. We deal with it. about to finish up the 30 minutes with a 10 minutes at race pace. Got to just a little bit above. I train on blocks of two weeks going hard and then one rest week. And today, it's the second last day of that two week block. Towards the end of those two week blocks, everything starts feeling tired. Every workout feels tough. Start throwing sissy fists, little glimmers of motivation, and then things start hurting. The things that make it easier to keep going are things like today where, A, I've got a coach, and I don't want to let him down, because B, I always train with a training group, and in 18 minutes they're expecting me to show up for a long run, so I'm accountable to them, and then C, having a regular schedule where I don't have to think about waking up and what do I feel like doing today. Today's Saturday, so it's just bike and run day. Also coffee helps. So we'll finish up here in 28 seconds. Really quick change. Drive over to Coach Pat's and see if I can make all 13 or 14 miles of long run. Bike's squeaky today. Dave, what are you going to say about today? Uh, the kiwi's a little tight, but the kiwi's a little tight. <laughs> that there was the, I think, longest run ever. It was 23k in 151. 450 per k pace. So I get a lot of questions about what I eat. So we're gonna answer what I eat right now. Breakfast, about 95% of the time, breakfast is either one of two things. Either gluten-free cereal, we usually go with rice checks because it's cheap. I add almond milk, coconut milk, quinoa milk, sometimes I mix and match. And then I throw in a little bit of protein just to make sure that I get some protein, sweetener. Truvia, a stevia sweetener to sweeten it up, and usually four berry blend for the antioxidants, make it super delicious. If I'm in a real big hurry, we go with gluten-free toast, natural peanut butter, natural honey from my honey guy. Both of them accomplish getting a fair bit of carbs, but not making it really, really quick release, like high glycemic index carbs, and I get a fair bit of solid food like slow digesting peanut butter, slow digesting proteins, slow digesting almond milk so that I don't have a really big blood sugar spike and then a crash. One thing that I am very conscious of is that honey gives me a fairly big blood sugar spike and if I don't have a workout that is really big to burn off all of the sugar from this honey shortly after, I do get hungry and I get those hunger pains when the blood sugar comes down. That's breakfast. After a workout, I'm doing one of either two things. I'm either going with overnight oats or the shake that I told you about the other day. But in both cases, again, I'm looking at accomplishing the same things. After that morning workout, I'm looking at replenishing all of my glycogen stores, so I am looking for a little bit more fast release carbs. Get as many varieties of food and types of food and liquids and electrolytes 
into my body so that I'm not missing out on anything. So MCT oil, beetroot powder, macadamia nuts, raisins, protein powder, psyllium husk fiber, chia seeds, flax, hemp hearts, almond milk, quinoa milk, coconut milk, hydrolyzed gelatin, like all kinds of stuff so that after that really hard morning workout, I'm making sure that I'm topping up my levels of everything and I'm not gonna become deficient and I'm not depriving my body by having such a small meal that I end up becoming hungry later in the day. Snacks. My go-to snacks are usually one of three things. I'll usually have an apple and a Lara bar. I'm actually trying to get away from the Lara bars because there's a fair bit of sugar and I find that they make me hungry later in the day. Chickpeas. We make a lot of things. Well, Kim makes a lot of things out of chickpeas because it's gluten-free and they provide a little bit of protein. Crackers with a base of vegan, what is this? It's kind of like cream cheese, but it's not really even that. And we go through a ton of hummus. Lemon hummus, roasted red pepper and paprika hummus. And the idea behind all of my snacks is keep it gluten-free, keep it fairly natural, nothing overly processed, nothing overly packaged, besides the Lara bar, I know, but make it plant-based and nutritious. I want nutrients, vitamins, antioxidants from every meal that I take in. For supper, these are two really good options because it talks a lot about the general approach that we take for how to get protein in your diet while you're eating plant-based while you're at home. I'm not a vegan, but at home we try to eat vegan-based meals. We use a ton of lentils. So this is a lentil soup and we've got lentils and white rice. Most meals that we have at home are some variation of chickpeas, white rice, lentils, vegetables. That's how we get all of our vegetables, but all of our carbs and all of our protein all in one. We make dinner and then freeze all the extras so that I can have the same thing at lunch. Before bed, every evening before bed, I think that I have had the same snack for probably 15 years. A, I'm not pregnant. B, I think that I might be the number one peanut butter eater all time in the history of the world. Because before bed, I have pickles, baby dills, and natural peanut butter together. Because before bed, I wanna settle my stomach. I wanna make sure that I am digesting something so that I can get to sleep really easily. So that's it. That's what I eat most days. And one of the biggest questions that I'm sure you're wondering is, Taryn, where do you get your protein? I don't worry about it that much. One of the reasons that I don't worry about it is this. Where does a silverback gorilla that weighs 800 pounds of raw stinking muscle get their protein? They don't worry about it that much. So I didn't worry about it that much either when we started eating more vegan. And you know what? I feel great. If I do feel like I'm craving a little bit of meat, I'll have a little bit of meat and that'll happen maybe every two or three weeks. As far as eating gluten-free, I only do it because I recover a lot quicker, I'm less sore, I weigh less, and my dad is full on celiac, so I have a very high likelihood of developing intolerance to gluten if I continue to eat it. All these recommendations aren't what's going to work for everyone, it's just what I've found. Works for me, keeps me healthy, keeps me recovered. All right, Kim shoveling right in behind you. You shovel while I become famous on the internet. It's a good trade-off. Have a good day.